Hello. This will be the first episode in a series that looks at the history of play and its place in education. We'll be going through the theory and ideas behind our current understanding of how play factors into development and learning. Ultimately, in this series, I'd like to answer a few questions. Namely, why do we as human beings play? What things shape the way we play today, and how might we improve play going forward? Sounds good? All right, then without further ado, I'm Scott Van Wy with AAA State of Play, and today we're going to learn about the beginnings of modern pedagogy and the founding of kindergarten. Let's start in Zurich, Switzerland, with the very Swiss-sounding Enlightenment thinker and pedagogue Johann Heinrich Pestalozzi. Like many Enlightenment philosophers, Pestalozzi was a big proponent of the values of human happiness, liberty, and tolerance. He's considered an educational reformist for his belief that education is a right that should be provided to everyone, especially the poor. He also saw education as the means to lift and rebuild society, and he made strides to see these principles implemented on a broader spectrum. Pestalozzi's approach to teaching sought to break down learning into its component parts. He noticed that the teaching of mere words and facts, which compromised virtually all elementary education up to that point, wasn't really conducive to learning in young children. Instead, he sought to nurture his students' inclinations and synthesize learning with their natural development. The head, the hand, and the heart, corresponding with the mental, physical, and moral, were the three faculties that Pestalozzi sought to grow in a student. The hand, or physical education, was integral to his pedagogy. While all elements worked together harmoniously, it was through exercise that children could engage and discover the natural world around them, as well as socialize and build skills that would help them later in life. At his school at Iverdon, Pestalozzi would develop ideas that are now standard in education including a rejection of corporal punishment and methods that center around the child. This approach to teaching sought to develop a full-fledged thinking and feeling human being, rather than a repeater and memorizer of the catechism and other info. It was at Iverdon that Pestalozzi would teach Friedrich Froebel, an up-and-coming German pedagogue and an important figure in modern education. Froebel took Pestalozzi's ideas and was able to implement them into a recognized institute for children under the age of seven, for whom there was little to no formal education, and there wasn't really much of a belief that children under the age of seven even could be educated. Froebel took the counter stance, saying, because learning begins when consciousness erupts, education must also. The space that Froebel created for younger children to grow and develop in a controlled, nurturing environment, which he called a children's garden, or kindergarten, featured many of the lesson types that he had learned from studying with Pestalozzi. Singing, dancing, gardening, exercising, and more. The role of play took a front seat in the kindergarten classroom. Froebel especially emphasized the relationship with the environment and nature. The melding of these two principles created spaces that allowed for children to discover, by active participation, their own abilities and limitations. They would engage with the world around them, gain experience via direct interaction, and draw conclusions revealed by those actions. In addition to the establishment of kindergarten, Froebel would develop a set of toys which he called gifts that were designed to be introduced to a child over the course of their development. Aimed at stirring and exciting a child's creativity, the toys slowly introduced various elements of the natural and physical world. For an infant, a soft ball of some sort, perhaps of yarn, all in one color. At ages one to two, a sphere, a cube, and a cylinder all made of wood were introduced, including strings so that they may swing and spin around. After that, various different building blocks of growing complexity are introduced. Prisms that are rectangular, triangular, semicircular, oh my. These objects teach children about nature and the environment around them. They can develop motor skills, hand-eye coordination. They can build an understanding of weight, texture, color, even smell. They can learn about objects' relation to each other in space, or to themselves. Building blocks encourage kids to plan, create, mess up, rework, and create again. And I think that's really beautiful. Because play is a good means of learning. Engaging with the environment is important to us all, young or not. Through it, children, and people in general, find a sense of agency, as well as develop social and physical skills and maintain cognitive faculties. That quote from Froebel, Learning begins when consciousness erupts. Well, it would follow that learning doesn't end until consciousness does too. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time when we take a look at industrialization, education, and the Boston Playground movement.